Hi everyone, I did a live stream last night and in the live stream somebody mentioned to me that uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, or AOC as she could be coming known, which I think is a really cool you know, nickname, AOC. Um, somebody, asked, uh, somebody mentioned that she was on Jake Tapper's State of the Union and wasn't very happy with the way she, uh, she performed. So let's just go to the interview and just show the question that, that the, uh, I've forgotten the person's name who highlighted it to me now. I do apologize, but I just want to go to this video and, and show, uh, the question that they were referring to. Now, to be fair to Alexandria Casio Cortez, she was asked two questions before this one, one about Puerto Rico and one about Cynthia Nixon that I think she did a pretty good job on. But this one, I really do think she fluffed. Um, Let's just take a look. Your platform has called for various new programs, including Medicare for All, Housing as a Federal Right, a Federal Jobs Guarantee, Tuition-Free Public College, Cancelling All Student Loan Debt. Um, according to nonpartisan and left-leaning studies friendly to your cause, including the Center on Budget and Policy Priorities or the Tax Policy Center, the overall price tag is more than $40 trillion in the next decade. You recently said in an interview that increasing taxes on the very wealthy plus an increased corporate tax rate would make two trillion dollars over the next 10 years. So where's the other 38 trillion dollars going to come from? Well, one of the things that we need to realize when we look at something like Medicare for all, Medicare for all would save the American people a very large amount of money. And what we see as well is that these systems are not just a uh, pie in the sky. They are many of them are accomplished by every modern civilized democracy in the Western world. The United uh, the United Kingdom has a form of single payer health care. Canada France, Germany. What we need to realize is that these investments are better and they are good for our future. These are generational investments so that not just they're not short term band-aids, but they are really profound decisions about who we want to be as a nation and as and how we want to act as the wealthiest nation in the history of the world. She didn't answer the question. How are you going to pay for it is the question. It's a very simple question. How are you going to pay for it? She started out pretty well. She started out on the right track and then just veered off and took a wrong turn somewhere into the bushes. And Tapper comes back at her. Right, no, I, I get that. But uh, you, the price tag for everything that you've laid out in your campaign is $40 trillion over the next 10 years. Mm -hmm. um, I understand that Medicare for All uh, would cost more to some wealthier people uh, and to the government and to taxpayers while also reducing individual health care expenditures. But I'm talking about the overall package. You say it's not pie in the sky, but $40 trillion is quite a bit of money. Uh, and the, the taxes that you talked about raising to pay for this, to pay for your agenda, only count for two. And I'm, I'm, we're going by left-leaning uh, mm -hmm. analysts. Right. Well, when you look again at, again, how our health care works, currently we pay m much of these costs go into the private sector. So what we see is, for example, you know, a year ago I was working downtown in a restaurant. I, I went around and I asked how many of you folks have health insurance. Not a single person did because these they were paying, they would have had to have paid $200 a month uh, for for a payment for insurance that, that had an $8,000 yeah. deductible. What these represent are lower costs overall for these programs. And additionally, what this is, is a broader agenda. We do know and we acknowledge that there are political realities. They don't always happen with just the wave of a wand, but we can work to make these things happen. And in fact, when, we, when you look at the economic activity that it spurs, for example, uh, if you look at my generation, millennials, mm -hmm. the amount of, of economic activity that we do not engage in, the fact that we delay purchasing homes, that we don't participate in the economy and purchasing cars, etc., as fully as possible, is a cost. It is a, a an externality, if you will, of, of a unprecedented, unprecedented amounts so of student loan debt. I'm assuming I'm not going to get an answer for the other $38 trillion, but we'll have you back and, and maybe we can go over that. She gave Ch uh, Jake Tapper an opportunity to come back at her twice with you haven't answered the question. She started out answering the question really well. She started out by saying it's going to save the American people. And that's it. She just went off. No, you say she missed a perfect opportunity there. Perfect opportunity to just say, well, not, not, not for the first time in the last few weeks, Mr. Tapper. You're misleading the public by saying it's going to cost $32 trillion there as if it's an additional expense. This is actually cheaper, despite what your 
non-fact fact check said. This is actually cheaper than what the American people already pay by some distance. She could have started out with that. And she started out talking about that and then just veered off. And when, when somebody asked me this, the same question, somebody asked me, how would you pay for this last night on my live stream? And immediately I just said, off the top of my head, stop all wars abroad. Just stop all wars abroad, wars abroad and bring the wars back home. Um, we've got 900 military bases, or the United States has got 900 military bases around the world, plus the Black Ops bases that we, we don't know about, which NUMA probably another 500. We could get rid of at least 1,000 of those. There you go. So with regards to you see you're blumping 32 trillion in there, that's actually misleading. That's actually going to save the people money. So that 32 trillion shouldn't be in there. If anything, it should be in there as something like a figure of minus 5 trillion because that's how much is going to save the people. And then she could go on and she could say, right, there's an easy tra 10 trillion with stopping the wars. We've got a $21 trillion black hole in the Pentagon. Can you imagine somebody going on CNN and when that question is an answered, just saying, just stop all the wars and attacking Tapper? We would be lavishing praise on them. Lavishing praise on them. She had a perfect opportunity there to do it and didn't. Why? And then I started thinking about it after the live stream ended. And, and I started thinking, well, there's an easy tra 10 trillion just by stopping the wars and, and halving the middle military bases or drastically cu cutting the military bases. I started thinking, well, you can reverse the tax cuts that the, the GOP just passed. Which, what was it, two and a half trillion, something like that, going towards the rich in the next ten years? There's another two and a half trillion, so already we're, we've, we've now got a two and a half trillion, probably five trillion surplus as to what we're already paying. And then you could go on, well, we could in, increase the uh, high end of, the highest rate of tax. We could increase that up to, you know, 75%. It, I think under FDR it was over 90, wasn't it? So you could say, right, the high end of tax is 70%, and that will obviously all go all pumps into the uh, economy on a sliding scale. You could say, right, okay, we're going to stop subsidizing giant companies like Amazon and Walmart um, and giving them giant tax cuts and incentives in the states to bring their giant companies, which obviously obliterate small businesses, into our states, and then pay the, uh, pay the people who get the jobs to make the figures look good, pay them less than a living wage, and then all of a sudden they've got to drain more money off the government in the form of food stamps and welfare. These are all off the top of my head last night that I wrote down. End all, end all the subsidising of giant companies and the fossil fuels as well. All the subsidies that are going to the, uh, the fossil fuels. I think it was 20 billion last year was spent in America going towards the fossil fuel companies. And then the money that you're actually sending to people like, you're giving away to people like Amazon and Walmart who aren't paying their fair, uh, fair share in tax already. You're not giving them that money, and you're not obviously subsidising the fossil fuel industry. All the money you're saving there, that could be ploughed into a green new deal. It can be ploughed into solar panels. It can be ploughed into batteries. You know, we need batteries in the world desperately. We need to be able to store our power, store green energy, and then you can plough it into wind power and geothermal and all sorts of green energy, and that will create jobs that will replace the jobs that, will, um, that would be lost within the military-industrial complex. You may remember, I've shown it before, uh, Rand Paul last year, or it might have been earlier this year, um, was saying we need to we need to stop these offensive wars abroad. And I think it was Wolf Blitzer, yeah, it was Wolf Blitzer who was interviewing him. The first question he came back with was, well, what about the jobs? Well, first of all, that's, that's immoral. You know, what about the jobs that will be lost when we're not killing all these people around the world? But you could say, well, the money you save there goes into green energy. It really was, it's an open goal, that question is, to a progressive. An open goal. And she totally missed it. Totally. She started out with a sentence. And then she even said, who the hell is advising her now? She even said, this is not pie in the sky. You don't even mention pie in the sky. Even saying it's not pie in the sky. You're giving them a chance to throw that back at you. And Jake Tapper obviously grabbed on it and said, well, you say it's not pie in the sky, but how are you going to pay for it? It's just... Ah, oh, and then she did the old politician's trick by 
going off with a personal story about her being in a bar and what, uh, being in a restaurant and people not being able to afford. The question was, how are you going to pay for it? It's a simple question. She must have been asked this question by interviewers at least 50 times in the last six months and she must have been trained to answer that question. She should have been trained to that question a thousand times so it is literally second nature to her to come back with a research, a rehearsed speech as to how we're going to pay for it and obliterate any stupid MF like Jay Tapper who asks her that question live on air. Can you imagine him asking... That question of Kyle Kalinske, somebody who used to advise Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, because this is how he would answer it, pretty much the same way I would. How are we going to offensive, uh, pay for it? Bang. Number one, stop all offensive wars. Cut 900 military bases. That's the first two things I said. End all welfare to all very profitable megacorps. That's the next thing I said. Then he state goes on to say, stop 80 billion in quantitative easing per year to big banks. Bang, there's another option. Wall Street transaction stack. Bang, there's another option. Capital, increase the capital gains tax and the marginal rate. I've mentioned that. That's who should be advising her. That's who was advising her. Not anymore since they dug up old dirt on Jenk Yuga and basically got rid of him and, and Carl had to leave for the I think sake of his sanity to be honest, out of principle. I don't know who's advising her now, but they're not doing a very good job. And I've got a feeling it's somebody within the corporate democratic circles. Because that is a corporate democrat answer that she's just given. It's really disappointing when Jenk Yuga was E ejected from the Justice Democrats, which I don't think he should have at all. He should have been, he shouldn't have been at all. There's no, I don't believe he should have quit. I think he should have stood his ground, regardless of whether he said, you know, the people made it clear. But I don't know the ins and outs of that. So, I could, but he, because when he was ejected, it felt like the establishment enveloped the Justice Democrats into them. And how many justice Democrats have, uh, have won their primaries now? And then all of a sudden, their, their wording has changed pretty quickly. It's not the first time that Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez has missed the ball, remember. She's walked back stuff on Palestine as well. She's getting advice here from people who don't know what the F they're talking about. She's getting advice, I am sure now, after seeing that, from people that have been perennial losers for a decade. Totally missed an open goal. And the worrying thing is, in my opinion, this. She is starting to sound more and more like a politician every single day by not answering straightforward questions. And that is not a compliment by any stretch of the word. If you like this video and you want to see more, please subscribe and click the bell below. Independent media platforms like mine are being censored by giant media such as Facebook and Google. So we rely on you, our audience, to share our work and spread the word. If you can, please support us on Patreon. You can do it on my channel for as little as a dollar a month. And every bit helps. We cannot do this without your support. Thanks very much for your support. It's really appreciated. Until next time, peace and take care.